Hi everybody, this is Mark from Mark's Mandalas, and this tutorial is going to show you how to do the sea urchin pattern. And I'm going to be using Mark's Mandalas dotting tools. I have all the sizes that you're going to be using uh, shown here. And um, since 4th of July is just around the corner, uh, Independence Day for United States of America, I'm going to go ahead and do this sea urchin pattern in red, white, and blue. So uh, to get started, I'm actually going to be doing this on a rock. And I don't use any templates as far as drawing any lines out or any markings other than the center dot. And what works great for me for finding the center on just about any object is to use one of my lesson sheets that you can download and print from my website. And I'll have the link in the description of the video. Um, you can also do a print saver version, which will actually reverse the colors. So it's just a little bit of black versus a lot of white. So you won't use a lot of ink. And what I do is on this lesson six, there is just a dot in the middle. And I take a micro drill bit or something very small and I punch a hole through that. So now I have center. Um, obviously this rock is not perfectly round or square. And so uh, what I do is I'll flip over the lesson sheet and this is the back side of the rock. You can see I haven't spray painted it. I spackled uh, this to smooth it out. So it's a, a, it's a, a smoother, more even surface. And then I spray painted it with uh, satin black. And so I want to mark the center on this side. And so I'm going to flip over the rock on the back side of the lesson sheet. And it doesn't really matter if you use the back side or the front side of the lesson sheet. And I'm just going to visualize. I'm just going to go ahead and, and try to get this close. And you can use a measuring tape on the front side also, but I find that this works um, just as good for me and it's a little quicker and easier. So it looks like that's pretty close to about the middle of this paper. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to flip it over carefully without the rock or the card sliding. And I have a little bit of white paint here and I usually use my number one tool for this, but the number three tool will work, will work just fine also. And I'm just going to poke this through that center hole, make sure it gets through there. And I'm going to carefully peel this up so it doesn't slide. And you're going to see now you have your center dot. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move into the slideshow portion of this tutorial and I will be talking over the top of it. And I uh, hope you're ready to get going and have fun doing this really cool pattern. Well, and I'm going to start this off like I do all my patterns. I'm going to start off doing 12, 6, 9, and 3 o'clock, or north, south, west, east, if it were a compass face, to uh, uh, keep balance on my mandala pattern. And uh, remember that you can pause this video at any time if you want to take a closer look at a particular step. And the sea urchin pattern one of the important things to remember is that the number of colors you use has to be able to be divided into the number of dots you're using in your pattern. And the most common pattern sizes are 6, 8, 12, and 16, meaning there are that many dots in each circle of dots to create your mandala pattern. And I'm using three colors, which divides or goes into 12 four times, so it divides into it evenly. I would not be able to use three colors for an 8 dot or a 16 dot pattern. Um, but you can go ahead and, and do that little bit of math before you decide how many colors you're going to use and how many dots you're going to use in your pattern uh, doing the sea urchin. Now I did this tutorial in two parts because some of you are not going to be comfortable doing some of the embellishments yet, such as the accent dots um, or the dot drags, and that's okay. At the end of part one, that's a completed sea urchin pattern. Um, for those of you that would like to go on to part two, I, I encourage you to give it a try. Um, in this particular tutorial, some of my dots are pretty small, and I use magnifying glasses most of the time when I paint, even on larger dots, because I can really watch the paint and I can work it, um, which is something the more that you do this, you'll, you'll begin to be able to control the paint better. Uh, paint is pretty unforgiving, it kind of does what it wants to, but um, if you can keep a close eye on it, you can learn how to, how to manipulate it a little bit. And uh, so... Don't feel any pressure to move on to part two right away. You can put your finished piece aside at the end of part one and come back to it in a week or a month or even a year if you want to. 
And in case you're wondering why this is called the sea urchin pattern, it's because there are straight lines of dots that are going straight out from the center dot, similar to the spines of a sea urchin. So if you're wondering, that is uh, how it got its name. And we're actually getting pretty close to the end of part one, and I uh, want to encourage you to reach out if you have any questions, uh, either by making a comment on the YouTube video or you can email me through my website, send me a message through Facebook or Instagram. Uh, your input is very valuable to me and I, I really take it into consideration when trying to create content for everybody. So I hope you've enjoyed this part one and I hope that you decide to go ahead and check out part two and my other videos. Until next time, rock on.